You guys pray as long as you want to. I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. Listen to this. Paul said, he said, I die daily. Yes. He, that meant he had to put his flesh to death on a daily basis. Now listen to this. If you have somebody that's laying in a casket that's dead, you can walk up to them, you can spit on them, you can slap them, you can do whatever you want to to them. Are they going to move? Are they going to get mad at you? Are they going to be upset because you said something they didn't like? Listen, this is the word that I feel like God has given us for this new year. We have lived with offenses. We have lived with upsetness. We have got offended. We have done all of these things because we've been living according to the flesh. But he's saying, I am telling you, I am going to hold you accountable for getting yourself out of living in the flesh and to live in the spirit. When Paul said, Paul went through a lot of things. Paul was beat. He was stoned. He, he went through a lot of things. But you know what Paul said in the book of Acts? He said, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. How many of us, if somebody says something the wrong way to us, we're mad. We're mad and we're ready to fight. I think every hand could go up in this place. Every one of us. But this is what the Lord is saying. Paul said, he said, I die daily. That meant he had to get into a spiritual place. He had to spend time in the presence of God. He had to get in that word. That's why we say that word is so vital to you. You cannot live without getting that word in you. Because he said that my word is like a water. And it will clean you up. Listen to what Paul said. Paul said, I die daily. I buffet my body. He buffs his own body because this flesh is an enemy against the things of God. He said, lest I myself be a castaway. If Paul did not put himself and his flesh under subjection with getting upset and getting mad and getting hurt over every little thing, he said, I myself would be a castaway. Listen, why do we think we have the fruit of the Spirit in the Bible? This is what the Lord is saying. I am requiring you this coming year to get into a place where you not only know about the fruit of the Spirit, but you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. He said, I am requiring, I'm requiring you. I'm telling you, this ain't a word from me. This is a word from the Lord. He said, I'm requiring you. I'm requiring you to come up to a level of spirituality that you have not walked in because we're so busy walking like, I'm going to say this, like little babies in the flesh. You step on my toe, you hurt me, I'm mad, I'm going to cry. You hurt my feelings with one little word. But you know what I've been trying to practice? Listen, I'm going to tell you that's one of the biggest ways for the enemy to cause a fight between a spouse is for one to mouth off and the other one to mouth right back. But we've done it. And then it blows up to a big fight. And then you know what? The enemy just moves on out of the way for a little bit. And there you're left with that mess of a fight. And God said, this isn't my way. This isn't my way. This isn't what I want for you. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. I want you healed. I want you whole. I want you healthy. But let me tell you this. Whenever you give in to the acts of the enemy... You give the enemy a legal right to bring in trouble to your life. When we sin and we give in to these flesh feelings, we give the enemy a legal right to bring sickness, to bring destruction, to cause us problems. See, we don't know that, do we? The Bible said my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge. The Lord spoke something to me the other morning. And I'm not even at liberty to share it yet. I'm not even at liberty to share it. But it was something that I'm like, oh Lord, I, this is, you know, I, I'm going to search this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into this, God, because it's bigger than what I've ever heard you speak to me. But it's Bible. But it's Bible. And because we don't know the things of God. All of the things of God. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And it goes on to say, because you have rejected the word, you've rejected the truth. That's why people are destroyed by the enemy. 
You wonder why he gets in and he gets to do what he wants to do. It's like this. It's not God's will. It's not God's will. But when we give the enemy a legal right to come in and do these things, guess what? You open the door, he's coming in. You open the door, he's coming in. Open the door, he's coming in. There's a scripture in the Bible that I never really understood until the Lord began to speak these things to me. Remember the scripture? Some of you may know it, where it says if you uh, come into, I'm not going to say this word for word, but this, I'm paraphrasing this, but where it says where you come up against your enemy or your adversary, agree with him quickly. You guys know that scripture? Mm -hmm. Agree with him quickly. I thought, why would I want to agree with my enemy? Why would I want to ever do that? Because listen, when you're guilty, agree, repent, and get him out of your life. Amen. Agree, repent, and move on. If you don't agree, confess that you've done wrong, and repent from that, and move on, he's got a legal right. And I'm not going into that. I'm not going into that. But I'm just saying, the Lord is saying, for him to be able to do what he wants to do in us and through us, Listen, we have got to walk in a place in the spirit. We've got to walk. He's saying, I am requiring you. You know, that would be like your boss at work. That would be like your boss at work saying, look, I'm requiring you. I'm not just asking. I'm not just asking you to get a better education to do your job better. I'm requiring if you want to stay in this position. I'm requiring you to do this. And that's what God is saying. I'm requiring you. You know, some of us, we look at God and we've got him in this little box in our mindset, in our mind's way of thinking. God's going to do things my way. God's going to, no, God's going to do things his way. And if we don't know what the word says, and we are, and we are dumb to that, unlearned to that, then the enemy will have his way in our life. And people go, how? Why? I... My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. God is saying today, we need to get into a place. We need to make it a priority to get into a place where we are walking in the fruit. We're walking with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, Galatians 3 and 22. You can go read it. Go read about the fruit, what we're supposed to walk in. Because listen, if you don't, if we don't walk it in that, and we're walking with this flesh, Paul said, even himself, could be a castaway. So there's a lot to the fruit. There's a lot to the fruit. I ministered on that a few weeks ago. But God is saying, I can't say this enough, God is saying, I'm requiring you to come away from these petty things. I'm requiring you. You know, one of the things I say to myself now, when John says something sharp or he says something, I go, how would I react if I was a dead man? How would I react if I was a dead man? And I'm not talking about joking around, but I'm talking about serious when you when one of one of you and we've all done that. We've all done those things. We'll say things knowing it's gonna prick the flesh or not even caring. I preached a message a long time ago about the buttons. Everybody's got a button, and the enemy knows which one to push. The enemy knows who to use to push it. He knows how to push that button. And I'm telling you, once they push that button, it feels like sometimes they just hold that button. But listen, the Lord is saying, I want you to get all of this flesh stuff out of the way. He said, because the flesh man is an enemy against God. So if you're listening and you're allowing the enemy to run and to rule your life, then you are contrary to God. He said, why call you me Lord and you won't do the things that I tell you to do? If he's truly Lord of your life, you're not going to live the way of the flesh. You're going to do things his way. And we've got to get to a place where we're living how he wants us to live. Not according to how we want to live. Amen. Because the way we want to live, the Bible said a, a man's ways are right in his own eyes. We'll all take the easy road. But you know what I've learned in life? When it's the things that God wants from me, and it's a faith walk, it's challenging. It's challenging. It's not an easy walk. It's challenging to leave your home, to move up, to move away somewhere, to leave everybody you know. 
I'm not saying God's going to ask everybody to do that, but he did me. He did us. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but I can tell you it was the most rewarding time of our lives. The most rewarding time of our lives. And that's what God is saying, I want to do for you. I want you to come away from the things of the flesh so that you can walk in the spirit and I can bless you. I can give you more. I can give you more than what you ever dreamed. But as long as we keep a mindset of this flesh mentality and we're obeying the lust of the flesh and we're listening to what this flesh man wants and we're doing what this flesh man wants, God cannot take us where he wants to take us. It's really up to you and I. He's got a great plan for our life. But it's really up to each of us where we go and where we end up. Even Paul, even Paul, I want to say this again. Even Paul said, lest I myself be a castaway. He had preached the gospel, but he himself could still be a castaway. He could still be cast into hell. He could still be cast into hell. So no matter your good works, no matter your great works, if you're not walking in the place where God has said, I want you to walk, and in the things that God has said, I want you to walk in, you can still be a castaway. Because you may be doing a good work, and he's saying, I need you over here doing a God work. And you're saying, oh, but this feels easy and good to the flesh. I'll take this route. He's saying, no, I need you over here because I need you to touch multitudes of people. And you're going, oh, but I got a little group over here. I can't leave these three people, Lord. I just can't leave this one or two over here that I'm trying to teach. And he's saying, but I want to take you to places to speak to volumes of people. Or just to let your light be, to be a greater light to those that you're around. Listen, he's saying, I'm requiring you. I am requiring you to come up into a spiritual place out of the works of the flesh. 